imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Photonic Reversal. Photonic Reversal. Photonic Reversal. With your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree to shop and nail it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's all Okay. It means something. It means something. You know, that's my take on it. Like, what's yours? Protonic reversal! That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It is a scientific fact. We are all up in your face. It is time once more for the one, the only... Protonic Reversal! Welcome to it, welcome to it, welcome to it. Special Tuesday edition, Quarant Times, of the ye old, ye old shirt, ye old the Protonic Reversal. And uh, I have none other than uh, two-thirds of the mighty Nonagon. Uh, I've got uh, John and Robert. Uh, thank you thank you guys so much for being on the show. Uh, this is, uh, I'm surprised we haven't done this before. Frankly. Well, you know, when you put my it- producer. When you only put out a record every 17 years, you know. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so it has been it has been a bit since um, and, and the previous records are both the uh, the last two are both EPs. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, which I love. And, and and anyone that will listen, I've I've I have told the tale of not a gone to anyone that will listen. We're very, very grateful. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, I've certainly been a passionate advocate for you guys, but. I guess it's one of those things I never thought about them in terms of, of uh, EPs. It was more just, oh, that record's so good, you want to play it again immediately. And like some of that maybe uh-huh. because of length, right? <laughs> 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 it's not just quality, maybe it's also length. Uh, but this, this is a, this is an honest to goodness full length record. Of course, the record, which I should should mention, is uh, called uh, They Birds, and uh, it's. Very beautiful. The artwork is very awesome, uh, and it actually comes with a cool little uh, little, little book. And I believe that's uh, that's you, Mr. Gomez, right? That's uh, that's yes, you're doing. Yes, it would be. Yeah. Uh, also, hello. Hi. How, are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> how are you guys? You get what? Are you are you having a, are you having a good quarantine? You you you're doing okay? You, you, you getting this by? Is, this has been like the best year of my life. It's been fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's joking. <laughs> I honestly don't. Robert hates people. This has worked out really well for him. <laughs> it's a misanthrope's dream. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it, it's uh it's been, you know, I'm sure everybody has variations of the same answer. It's been weird, but you know, we've made the best of it. In some ways, you know, I, I feel a little bit of survivor guilt, you know, Christy and I, the woman who was nice enough to marry me. We have a, a little hut in the woods that we've been able to like basically quarantine in, and even though cabin fever has set in on occasion, for the most part, it's been it's been doable. So, did you? And and that's and that's great, and that's a good place to be uh, for sure. And it's I think it's something where, as you mentioned, it is something that is discussed often on this show. But I think the answers are always interesting, right? Because a lot of times, you know, some people are having easier times than others. But it's interesting to see who can. Uh, who can like work through it, how they're doing it. <laughs> it's amazing to find out how many other misanthropes there are in the world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, don't get me wrong. Affable or otherwise. <laughs> I'm fully aware that my, you know, I do feel a little bit of survivor's guilt for sure. Like, you know, my, my privilege has definitely paved the way for me being able to be where I am right now. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, I definitely have friends who are, who are going through it a bit harder, but everybody's making the best of, of what they have, you know, and I, and, you know the resilience that I've seen in a lot of people has been really inspiring. Definitely. Uh, did you did you find that? So when did you guys start making this record? Was this recorded pre-pandemic or was this a, a post-pandemic record? Yeah, you can get without that. It was uh, a t- 2019. We kind of we had plans to record it actually pretty early 2019, and then there were issues with uh, our our engineer. 
uh, had uh, broke his leg or fell off a skateboard or something. And, and so we had a, a couple months of uh, like, we had to keep pushing it back, pushing it back. And we ended up, I think, finally getting the final bit of recording done in December of 2019. And I think at that point we're like, all right, th- we're going to have this out by summer. We're going to push it really quick and we're going to get out there by summer. And then yeah, a the bunch pandemic. of tour dates lined up. The whole yeah. Thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's where you, you cue the, uh, the gif of the, uh, the guy throwing the papers up in the air. Like, all right. I'm sorry, Robert, uh, I interrupted you. What were you, you going to say? Uh, no, I wasn't going to say anything. I was just, <laughs> but, but you got it, you got it in kind of right at the, right before pandemic started and you had pandemic band plans like you you had the idea yeah. that like you were going to be you were going to be doing stuff in 2020 that wasn't uh you know binge watching whatever show that everyone's looking at uh, at that moment in time yeah and, and i think we probably i don't think it like there was an issue with places not being able to press the record or, or whatnot if i'm not mistaken i think we could have gone forward with it but it just seemed like well what's the point you know <laughs> And it just after after year though it's like well we got to do it any we better do it now because there's no other you know there's no options now we can't have a a release show or anything like that yeah. but uh, and, and the wind was out of our sails I mean seriously in my mind you know in my unguarded moments I was like this is gonna be the year of Nanagon we're gonna have a <laughs> record we're gonna play more out of town shows than we've ever played we actually had like a, you know a couple short tours like all figured out like the whole thing and uh, and then once that balloon burst it was like oh we've got this thing in the can what what, let's just let it sit there for a bit you know well and there was that original idea of like oh okay well spring's screwed up but i'm sure this will be sorted out by summer yeah we always we all thought it was going to be the 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 seasonal thing that they always they kept saying at the beginning oh the flu it's like the flu it'll go away in the summer yeah and then oh everyone's gonna abide by good safety standards so this will be over pretty quick right this is like the only unifying thing we could ever oh yeah okay uh, well, all right <laughs> okay. okay totally we should that, this, 20, 2020 should have been the year we planned our tour of taiwan <laughs> and australia and new zealand because that would have worked I mean, out perfectly that would have that worked out really well yeah would have yeah, been exactly. great yeah but once again human nature screwed up nadagon's plans so let me, you know, it's amazing for as much as I know about you guys and, and know with you guys, I actually don't really know anything about how the band started. And let, let's just get into a little bit of the background just for, you know, I, of course I know, but for the listeners, uh, John Robert, uh, <laughs> to get uh, this a little more to how you guys started, um, et cetera, et cetera. Cause, cause you're a very long running band and uh, you know, something where, I couldn't imagine, it, you know, Nonagon being anything but you three guys, one of which is conspicuously absent. I'm just going to point out right now. Uh, so, <laughs> Tony's, yeah, what, Tony's worth like Tony's worth Tony's the other half. The two of us are worth half. Tony's the other half. <laughs> He's worth the so, full half. So, so give me like, uh, you know, and this, this either one of you can 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 feel this. You can trade off however you like. But give me the origin story encapsulated as, as best you can for how Nonagon came to be. Uh, well. First off, John and I knew knew each other from uh, school, more of like acquaintance. We weren't like great pals hanging out all the time, but we knew each other. And there was a point at some point by by the time we were all leaving school, we actually had a a jam session with with another band that I was in back in back in college, where he played. We had a we were a drum machine band, but John said, "Hey, I've got a drum set." And he played drums with us, and that was kind of the last. I we we hung out for a weekend. That was the last I saw of him until 2000 when I moved to Chicago and I we crossed paths, but. In the meantime, John knew Tony, and here is that story. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes a little something like this. <laughs> Tony and I, Tony and I were, um, we had a mutual friend by the name of Brian Vaughn who had gone to school with Tony down in Carbondale way back in the day. And uh, Brian and I had become friends, and uh, he had been, he had knocked around in a bunch of bands, including the Baltimores out of Chicago. And uh, he said, yeah, let's start playing some music. And we got another professional friend of ours. And when I say professional, we were like booksellers and, you know, and uh, freelance journalists. So it wasn't exactly like professional. But um, we got our friend Mark Pearson, who went on to be in the Boston band Neptune. Um, oh, he, right. Yeah, I love Neptune. That was a great yeah, band. Just, man, just they made like, all their own instruments. Like that was yeah. that was a great 
wild man. Yeah. Yeah. No, just just one of the best. And and so Mark, before he was unceremoniously like pinched from our band to, to play with Neptune, um, uh, Tony, Brian Vaughn, Mark Pearson, and myself had a band called The Metric System, um, and we wrote a bunch of songs, and we finally played one show together at the Fireside. So that you'll, that'll tell you how long ago. Uh, if you're from Chicago, that'll tell you how long ago this was. We played one show together at the Fireside with Neptune. And then um, like two weeks later, Mark's like, I've got bad news for you. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm heading east, which we couldn't, we couldn't fault him for at all. I'm going uh, to Neptune. <laughs> yeah. And so there was this fallow period, but Tony and I had hit it off as good friends. And so and we were just like, hey, let's let's try and do this. Tony's like, do you know somebody who plays bass? I'm like, well, just, I just connected with this guy that I knew from Champagne. You know, let's, uh, let's see how it works out. And the rest is uh, history 18 years later. <laughs> so then, so then tell me about the run up towards the first record, which is the one I know nothing about. Like I came in with people live everywhere. That's, that's kind of my entry point. Uh, mm-hmm. I think with a lot of the same people that we know uh, to you guys' as band, but like, I went for years without even realizing there was anything before that. So tell, tell me a little bit about No Sun, uh, the, the path towards like becoming a band, and then what that what that one was all about. Um, no Sun was like okay, it was a while after we had been together, but we had been playing around quite a bit, and we finally had again it's an EP, six songs or whatever it was. <laughs> put together and we wanted to record it and that was a big thing and uh and we'd heard of this electrical place that they they do music at and uh and we, we thought <laughs> they do the musics <laughs> we were like well, we're getting old or whatever and that was back then when we weren't old but we're like we, we you know we should do this we got to go and uh, do this at the at the cool studio and uh yeah and it be, it was a for me it's the first time i've ever been in a recording studio tony's been in other bands and john's been in other bands who've done stuff in studios but it was for me it was like wow this is this is like cool this is the first one i've been to and it's awesome and we recorded the album and uh cd only <laughs> Which, but, uh, that was, kind of, but the was thing is <laughs> that was so it was the style of the time no but yeah. but, but, it, but like i'm joking i say that in a funny voice but it actually is true like i mean i the band i was in you know we sold cds hand over fist never had a vinyl release it was sort of like oh well no one's gonna want that we did not sell them (laughs) hand over fist (laughs) (laughs) so quit your bragging there conan (laughs) it was was not meant to be (laughs) that was just more like hey i'm glad those sold out because i otherwise i'd you know that they'd be sitting in the basement along with all of this you know unsold records uh yep so so uh anyway so uh And our, our problem, though, with that first album is that it was at Electrical and we were all very nervous about being there and, and doing it. And I think it kind of comes through in the recording a bit, maybe. And and, and we, you know, so we you're not going to hear us playing many songs of that, that record anytime soon. But but it, it was like uh, very much at the time it was cool. But in hindsight, it's like, well, we, sh- we, we were really very nervous about it. And John, I think one of the big issues like John had like like oh it just doesn't sound like it sounds in the practice space and 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 in the end after fiddling around so much it maybe didn't work out the way we wanted to and but i mean i still think it's a great sounding record but it just it we were picturing coming out sounding like oh yeah we're gonna sound like uh, shellac exactly like shellac because we're in the same room that they recorded you know and it yeah. didn't work out that way <laughs> turns out we didn't have the songs what do you yeah. know <laughs> yeah well the band yeah, exa- the, yeah there is you know it's not really sexy you don't really hear many behind the music about it or necessarily but like a band finds its voice it finds its footing it finds its sound and it doesn't always happen immediately and it's you know there, there's a lot of fetishism for a band's first record but i think that i mean i think it's interesting some of my favorite bands you know it's like oh no it's the second one or the third one or something where it's like oh no, then it got really good and i think that that's perfectly legitimate and uh <clears throat> again i didn't realize there was one before for years but bob chapman in the chat box says uh, first time i saw nonagon they were literally tossing free copies of no sun from the stage <laughs> 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 which is a delightful visual <laughs> uh yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm I'm super proud of the record. Don't get me wrong. It's just that we listen to it now, and um, you know, Tony says it best. We just we're spazzes, you know. Yeah. I, it was the kind of thing where 
we had spent a long time kind of writing and working on those songs. And they were pretty complicated songs. But the problem is, as we learned to play them better, they got easier for us to play. So what we did is we sped them up to make them harder to play because that was our comfort zone, right? So the, right. the songs on the record are probably at like, I don't want to say double speed is what they were originally written at, but they're all yeah. not. I listen to that now and I'm like, who the, like, who are these crazy kids? You know, it's, it's yeah. nuts. Did you feel like you had, you were trying to prove something yourselves or just? Uh... No, we're just spazzes. <laughs> that's about right that's about right no I mean it's like I think we always felt like we were trying to do something hard and so we would try and just make it hard on ourselves you know like unnecessarily so sometimes and I think you know in talking about the new like the the night and day between that record and this record is that I think we're more confident I think we let the songs breathe more I think yeah. we, you know we we understand We've become just, you know, a little more mature. We've, we've discovered there, there's metronomes that you can practice to. <laughs> <laughs> that don't automatically speed up. <laughs> yeah, metronome technology in 1990, 20, I'm sorry, 2006 was just, it was terrible. Like, you know, it was the metronome stone ages then. Yeah, pretty You had to get like a, a wood burning metronome and, you know, make sure you had enough logs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the practice space was already so hot. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and I do want to uh, speak about the, the new record and go into it in depth. But if you if you fellows don't mind, uh, you know, I'm such a huge fan of uh, People Live Everywhere and Less Hydronaut. Uh, if, if you could speak a little bit to both those records, because I feel like just out of the gate, I think People Live Everywhere is sort of when I think of Nonagon, it's like, oh, 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 interesting. OK, this is this. this. Cause, and it's it's not like um, it's got pizzazz. You know, and certainly there's antecedents for it. You know, I think I at one point said like, you know, Hoover, 10 grand, Fugazi, things along those lines. Uh, and to me, it, it was, it's right down the line, for all that stuff, but with your own, your own unique voice, which is, which is not as common as I would like it to be. So, I mean, there was a like, what, four year gap between those, right? Does that, does that seem accurate? I'll say that's a reasonable guess. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you uh, and you track that one with Justin, right, Mr. Uh, Justin yeah. Foley, both friend of, of the show. Yeah, both of those were done at Kurgalen Studios in Queens with Justin Foley, um, and the first one, "People Live Everywhere," the one that you were just mentioning, that was kind of a fluke. Like, he really hadn't recorded any bands other than his own in that shed up to that point, and we were there for a barbecue. We were there to play a, a small festival um, in Brooklyn. Uh, that, um, uh, you know, a lot of our friends were also playing at. And we we're like, well, in our free time, while we're, you know, basically helping to run this small festival, in our free time, we'll just, we'll go and lay down some tracks. And, um, you know, Justin, <laughs> Justin being a devotee of, of electrical audio and like having, you know, exchanged notes with Steve on several occasions was really wanting to get, he wanted to learn how to record drums because his band the austerity program um, is, a, is a drum machine band. So we really wanted to concentrate on, on, on recording drums, right? And so we spent a good chunk of time miking up those drums and then recording the drums and then playing it back almost as a goof. And then the first time we heard the drum playback, we were like, oh, oh no, we really need to be taking this seriously right now. Like this yeah, like this sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this isn't this isn't a weekend lark, right? We've yeah, really, yeah. Let's, let's kind of, F and do this, you know, and so we did. How'd you feel about the the songs at that point? Did you did it feel like you know you, you guys had like locked in who you were and, and what you were doing? Because it certainly sounded like that from the point of the record, view of the record, from uh, as a listener standpoint. I think so. Yeah, I mean, we we had had uh, like our yeah. I I think immediately after the first EP came out, we kind of this is how it, the cycle always is. Then we just, we kind of abandoned those songs and start working on new songs after that. And so That's we've, only got room, yeah. we've only got room in our heads for so many songs. Yeah. At time, <laughs> and then, and just the whole, the whole looseness of that, of that sesh. <laughs> was, <laughs> oh, I hate you. <laughs> but the whole looseness of it was uh, very, it was very comfortable. Unlike the nervousness of our first record. And it was, it was just fun to do. And, 
and we, we were all having a good time and it was like the, the nerves weren't there and like we may not have even played through our our own gear if i you know i think you we may have brought a your head or something but it was like all shared gear so it's not necessarily like we're not like chasing a specific tone that we normally get but it all but justin was like well trust him he does this stuff here and you know if we sound like austerity yeah. cool you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly there's worse bands to, <laughs> to to sound like and also no matter what i mean you're gonna sound you're gonna sound like yourselves uh you know which is which is not a bad thing either but it, it's it seems like having someone kind of you know in the family well i guess literally in the family uh, also probably helps us give a comfortable air to the recording environment i would imagine yeah no it was it was really great it was really fun but it was a lot of late nights because you know we're we're attending this festival we're only there for like a yeah. four-day weekend you know and we would come back and i think we had like most of sunday to work on it and that was it like there's no like you know we were recording overdubbing vocals and mixing all in that that really short period of time which is a good thing the balance you know we only picked five or six songs to do or whatever it was but it was still a lot it was still a lot yeah but I, i'll tell you i think like of the records up to this point um it, that's my favorite like i mean i just i feel like i feel like we um to answer the question i think you started to ask earlier that's the one where i think the songwriting like was where i trusted it you know and uh and and i listened to that one with more fondness than i do um last hydronaut or no sun and i don't know why i don't know why because it, it, hmm. it puts me in a better headspace so then let's talk a little bit about last hydronaut of course that one we're going back to uh robert's artwork there there's the the accident the excellent uh, it's a woodcut, right? Or is, is it a? It's a woodcut, right? It's a woodcut, digitally colored. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's, kinda... to, it's black and white in normal life, in 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 the real world, but on the album cover, I've I colored it. And uh, this one, there's some there's there's some there's some Robert vocals on on there too. Oh, you know, that's that's yeah, good. I'm sorry about that. Sorry to all our fans. <laughs> Wait, there's some what on there? What? <laughs> Robert vocals. <laughs> oh, Robert vocals. Oh, yeah. No, I was seeing in that me? deeply I... conspiratorial tone. Sorry, that's <laughs> super excited about the Robert vocals because you killed it. But you know, guys, you, you killed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. I did. Yeah, yeah I you did. It. You <laughs> killed it. Super, super dead. You oh, now that you mentioned it, I did kill it. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, and and again, this is this is also uh, with Justin, presumably not while trying to uh, split time between. Yeah, this massive was, other social activities <laughs> at the same time we did have we did make sure there was a show out there in new york to give us another reason to be out there but i we were right. we went there with the plan of recording and i believe we both john and i got sick that weekend and like john went may have gone back to record vocals but i know i can hear it in my my one vocal track that i'm like I'm a little <clears throat> a little raspy there that like, i'm yeah, like, yeah. i remember we were sick that weekend too yeah yeah <laughs> Do you have any uh, any other memories other than being being sick while uh, you know having to do vocals uh, for uh, Last Hadronaut? Which is, I think, I mean, I think that for for most folks, uh, you know, I think People of Everywhere is a great introduction to the band. But I think Last Hadronaut's like that's a, that's a good place for people to to get into it as well. There's some total jammers on there yeah. as well. I feel like I, I thought it would it would have been cool if we had waited uh, nine years and released them as like a double gatefold sleeve double EP. <laughs> Yeah, they kind because of, to me they kind of feel the same. Not the Conan the, Neutron move, by the way. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Whatever you do, don't do it. <laughs> it's a big pain in the ass. <laughs> that would be funny because because well, and it, you know, you bring up an important point because it's sort of like they're not dissimilar in and in, in vibe or sound necessarily. They all fit very nicely together. I mean, there isn't any you know psychedelic explorations or. <laughs> I think only those lines that I'm aware of. You're not going to get a lot of that from us ever. I, I, I promise you. Uh, but oh yeah, no, I've often thought that those two things, you know, like, you know, had we been a little more patient, um, you know, that would have been a great, that would have been great LP, like a great full length LP, you know, one side, uh, people live everywhere. The other side, last hydronaut would have been, would have been solid, but you know, at the time it was like, uh, you know, we've got these these six or seven songs. We've got this opportunity to record at a friend's studio and 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 be able to do it on the cheap and be able to have it sound good. Uh, we have a very limited amount of time. Um, it 
so why not do it and let you know and right. so and so we did and we did that twice in a row and it was in both cases the right call for us like no question i thought that the art print coming with it was a real cool move and something that you know at the time because we're talking like that's like almost eight years ago like seven and a half years ago or something along those lines and i feel like now people have gotten more inventive about their packaging and you know, including cool stuff like that. But I thought that at the time I was like, oh, wow, there's an art print that comes with this. Like, how cool. Huh, neat. Well, only for pre-orders though. So, you know, you got to right, put right. your special edition on discords that says- Did somebody King say King. pre-order? Sorry, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, that was a, if you have one of those, Conan, that's pretty badass because not, not everybody did, yeah. So thanks for your pre-order. Maybe maybe you should stop advertising about it. <laughs> but I, th- I thought it was a cool move. Let's put it that no way. No longer comes with pre-order. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come with it. Can't. It's pretty, pretty late for the pre-order at this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then let's 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 uh at one end there's a couple splits and things. Cool, 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 cool. But like we're here to talk about the new record, uh, which of course they birds thinking about you know cool things that come with it and you have i i just i have the thing on the screen and this is again doesn't help for the uh for the folks listening in right now but it comes with a gorgeous uh would you, would you call it a, a booklet uh like a chat book like some kind of you know um, in betweener a leaflet no it, it comes with reading <laughs> material it comes with a manifesto our manifesto know. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that that started out as uh as uh john's like i, I think i want to put the lyrics in the record like, and he had ideas, well, let's do a lyric sheet. And, and then there was probably, it probably came up like, oh, that wouldn't it be cool if it was a book? And then both the other guys in the band are like, oh yeah, that would be cool. I was like, oh God, <laughs> are you saying I got to make a book now? <laughs> so, uh, it's going to be a lot of work, boys. <laughs> uh, well, but it's a very, I mean, it, it's, it's not, it's not a half-ass thing. Like this is a cool, this is a cool little thing to when you, when you open it up, like, you know, Christ, half the time you buy a record, you just hope, like, is there going to be a download code in here? Like, is this, is this sleeve going to be, like, made of, like, toilet paper? Like, what, you know, like, you're, you're hoping for the best. <laughs> well, hats off to Jerry Durr from the amazing um, Freight Tree Records out of Cincinnati. He's in the amazing band, uh, Night of the Symphony. Um, but he is also a printing professional who, um, this booklet wouldn't have happened without him agreeing to, like, kind of on the cheap in his off hours at his place of employment, like, kind of... Uh, you know, like work it out for us. So um, that's the reason the production quality of it looks so good. The texture on the cover, like the, yeah. you know, the, the, the clarity of the pages, you know, it's just, it's an amazing thing that he did for us. It certainly doesn't seem like an afterthought. Let's put it that way. Like this, this is like a legit, <laughs> it's only going to increase in value. This <laughs> seems like a <laughs> Now how much would you pay? Pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it does you know it's it's a nice it's a nice little thing and it's it's not the same amount of surprise i have that like there was there was a i want to say it was like a kid a or amnesiac where they had the booklet hidden under the cd tray this is some real like okay oh, gen x yeah. maneuver. I've, I've, you know had a, I've had a few of those yeah i remember i can't remember i probably had that one but i think i remember a couple different bands doing that and just thinking because yeah. you could see it through the little pinwheel of the thing like, the what's that? that held in the the, the <laughs> yeah, desk yeah, yeah. And you'd be like oh wait there's something down there and then you'd like break the thing open to see what it was and it's like oh my god there's a whole booklet down here <laughs> yeah yeah and as as a nerd for things like crying of lot 49 and stuff like i, I always love that kind of thing and not not that there's that level of secrecy or anything along the lines with this but just like I don't know if it said anything about there being like a cool little book with it. I certainly didn't see it or I ignored it. So uh, it was a nice surprise. That, that's what nice, uh, <laughs> nice lit ref, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, the, you're the book dude. That's the guy. I forgot about that. <laughs> hey, book guy, why don't you read us a book? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be reading to you from They Birds, a comprehensive field guide to the majestic creatures of the night sky. Oh, not night sky, just sky. Anyway, go ahead. No, that's, that's that's the after dark edition, and you have to yeah. pay extra for that one. <laughs> exactly. the Cinemax version, <laughs> the Red Shoe Diaries version. Right, exactly. Dear Penthouse, I never thought it could happen <laughs> until it happened to me. Uh, so the and the conceit of I, I don't know if, if if we want to explain the uh, the artwork uh, for the folks that they're just listening, but there are many different creatures with flying uh, apparatus apparati. Sure. There's different different methods of flying, and when I'm th- saying flying, 
I mean, in the like the newsreels of like the before times before airplanes, where there's like the bicycle with like the helicopter thing going, and like, uh, you know, the, yeah, that, oh, that, stock, that stock footage that we've all seen of the 15 winged plane. <laughs> just eating it completely yeah, totally. yeah. like, like the, here's all the stuff that didn't work <laughs> yeah. so you have like a you know turtle with like rocket boosters and like a tail fin you, you, know, you want to be sure that you can maintain your uh, direction yeah you, know, you don't want that's what i love so much about is the attention to detail like robert could have just like flung a bunch of like wings and propellers on a bunch of animals but you can tell he was like actually like aeronautically thinking about how these things yeah. would work. Yeah. You got to worry about the wow and flutter. You know, you got to make sure that <laughs> exactly. you, you change direction. <laughs> as exactly. Uh, did did uh, did you have that idea from the beginning? No, Robert. For the did not. This is another thing where, like, I had an idea of. Uh, well, the title came first because we had the title because there's, there's a story behind that, but we, we we've discussed that elsewhere. We can talk about it here too, but the title came first. So like I had this idea for non bird animals having wings. And I, I, I had vis- envisioned this really elaborate, like a school of fish type of thing, swirling image, but uh, that involved too much drawing. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, I see the problem. As an so, artist. You don't so want to too much drawing. Yeah. <laughs> I had made all these little illustrations of the animals. And then I was like trying to just kind of, uh, Photoshop them somehow together to make something that works. And I had done this one like, hey, it looks like a, uh, you know, 19th century naturalist uh, sheet, you know, that they would have to mark the Latin names of the various animals. And I did that version like, that's kind of cool. But here's my real version, guys. And I had some sort of modern like hip colors like you'd see it at Crate and Barrel. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and all the hot. hipster places. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, I showed the, a couple the, those two designs, and then and John and Tony were like, "No, no, we like the one with the uh, with the old timey look to it." I'm like, "Okay, yeah. well, yeah." And, then we'll, and and this is something that that would probably have never happened had the album come out when it was supposed to come out because we had a, an extended period of time when we could bounce ideas back and forth. And I think I'm gl- that helped. It, that's one one good thing that came out of that is that we had a little more time to think about the cover and and how we were going to present it. And so. Out of that came this idea, and from there came the booklet and the idea that it's going to be, we're going to have to come up with Latin names for all the songs and, <laughs> and, and everything else. Yeah. Having, yeah so, and, oh, go ahead, John, please. Well, I was going to say, having that extra time, thanks to the pandemic or whatever. Thanks, pandemic. Thank you, pandemic. Again, my privilege showing. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, th- the good thing about that was that we didn't have to make any rash decisions like you know we got our test pressings back and you know we heard a couple of blips in the test pressing and we were like you know what i think these might be maybe we're being too picky but let's let's send that back and, and yeah, have uh, it be know, with the thing you want it to be of yeah course. we're yeah. not and we're you know we're doing 180 gram vinyl now available on 180 gram vinyl and you know we're we're doing this right so and we don't have we didn't even have a release date like in mind at that point like it was open-ended so let's let's do what we can to make it right and it was it was a really great luxury that we were afforded because of that time i think well and you know it's a it's a terrible reason to have this time available but there's nothing wrong with being able to be uh, you know thoughtful towards something that's so important to you and well i mean it, what, i mean what it taught me was that this is the way you know in my mind's eye, this is the way it always should be. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I mean, yeah. this is, if, if this is important to you, don't, don't fuck around with it. Like take your time with it, make the decisions in the time they need to be made. Don't force yourself into like a, an artificial kind of timeline um, just for the sake of doing it. And, and uh, you know, and, and that is a, that was a hard lesson to learn. I mean, we're all locked into this habitual, you know, kind of hamster wheel of making sure that things are, you know, progressing in a way that other people will find acceptable. And, uh, and, you know, I, I, I just, you know, this, this gave us the excuse that apparently we've, all, you know, yeah, of course, and this is ridiculous because we've never gone like fewer than four years between a record before this. So, <laughs> you know, but this right, kind of right. justified our previous behavior, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> we can call it a retcon. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I think there's something to be said for that, right? Because there's there's an, there's an audience for what you guys do, uh, and it's engaged. 
but I think it's important to note that the way you guys do things is, uh, you know, when it's, when it's there, it's there, you know, when it's time to record a record, we'll record a record when it's time to release it, we'll release it. But there's no, there's not like a, you're not trying to, to make sure you can, you can hit a specific time and date for like, you know, the PR or something necessarily. Like it's something where it, 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 it the care and craftsmanship for what you guys do shows, you know, as much as like, there's a lot of humor and, you know, everyone like, haha, we're having a laugh, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm the, yeah, I'm very guilty of that as well. Uh, that it's, it matters for the people that it's for because people that it's for matter. Thank you. That's, uh, really, so- <laughs> well no, that is like, that's really well put. Like I wish we'd put that somewhere in the liner notes. Like that's amazing. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll have to have a recall and reprint them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, if you're listening, you're on call. We have to do a reprint. Hey, do it for the second edition, you know? <laughs> oh gosh. That would be great. Cause then we'd actually start making money on this thing. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah are you are you like this is the per unit cost i mean this is like the least sexy thing to talk about but i mean let's no, be real I mean, here is the per yeah, unit cost like off the scale here tell me more about your unit <laughs> <laughs> what's your what's your recoupment but i'll tell you what robert's unit you couldn't afford robert's unit no. uh, the, the, uh, the uh no yeah no we're selling them at 20 you know we're selling them at two dollars cheaper than we paid for them when you when you figure everything in, we know. figure though volume though we'll make it up on volume. <laughs> if there you we, go. If we can do a second pressing, if we can do a second pressing, then we'll actually be able to you know pay some bills. But you know until then, it's just it is what it is, and it's a labor of love. And if we can come close to breaking even uh, on this first time around, that's what we'll do. Well, it's interesting because something that I, I didn't expect was first of all, the rise of like the Bandcamp Friday culture and the fact that there would be this awareness connection with artists that otherwise might be able to, to tour and otherwise, uh, you know, get the, get these records out in the world. There would not only be acknowledgement of it, there'd be kind of almost like a, a mini movement uh, towards like, Hey, let's make sure that, you know, again, if you can, you know, if you're unemployed, don't worry about it. But like, if you got, if you can, you know, put a little bit forward and that's that's actually been really encouraging i feel like it's not articulated that well uh as a story but i think that's something that people are going to realize kind of down down the line a little bit that and again it's a drop in the bucket right doesn't it doesn't help uh you know your venues that are closing and uh, and other things along those lines but it's a small it's a small mitzvah i think is the move to uh to call that and then and once again i don't have a question for you guys i'm just sort of articulating my points aloud as if this was a ted talk but that's <laughs> no, we're it with you. we're with you <laughs> not only is the music of quality the packages and i think anytime you have a combination of things along those lines uh you're in a good spot and i think that uh, there's a lot of people hopefully that that will uh, check it out, especially listeners of, listeners of the show that maybe listen to the show because they hear like a more famous guest or something along those lines. The hopes is always more that famous. They, Wait, the, what are you talking about? More famous? Uh, like guests. like Tony from Nonagon? Hello. Oh, yeah. Well, heard. if he were here, he would show Paige Hamiltron the door. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that that is the idea, though, right? It's it's like uh, for me, it's all it's all a river. So the, the idea is like, hey. Uh, it's important to advocate for stuff you love. You know, that's one of the, you know, th- this is, this is, this is journalism advocacy, you know, just like Breitbart, really. And <laughs> you shut your mouth. The, uh, the thing about the, uh, like you, you, you started to touch on it a little bit. The thing about the band camp Fridays thing, which is, I mean, it just shows what an upright organization that is. Right. And yeah, the, absolutely. The, the quandary for me is I've got no problem with them taking their share. You know what well, saying? exactly. It's like the one like, company like, no, you should take your share. You right, exactly. You are working <laughs> so hard on my behalf. Take yeah. your percentage. <laughs> like, I almost don't want people to buy our stuff on Friday. On you know, like even this mm. upcoming Friday, I shouldn't be saying this because it's ridiculous. Yeah, you're quite the salesman. But, but I feel he's the like, one who came up <laughs> with the pricing scheme. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I, the irony, of course, is that I actually am a salesperson in my like professional life. But, I know, I know. But uh, but yeah, when it comes to this stuff, I've just got no 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 uh, patience for it. I, I I feel like that is an organization that has earned their bones, and 
by all yeah. means, if you feel like buying it on Friday because you want to give us a little bit of extra money, we will take that to heart and the mitzvah will be great, greatly appreciated. But at the same time, we've got no problem with Bandcamp. Like, you know, they're, I mean, PayPal, we can have another discussion. Yeah, I was going to say, I was gonna say <laughs> PayPal would be, yeah, you guys, can, you, you can lay off for a day, right? Yeah, That's, right. you're doing okay. Right. Spotify, you guys maybe could like take a powder for a day. You know, that, sure. that would be good. Yeah, man, PayPal free Fridays. I would be all about that. That would be a- hell yeah. <laughs> Let's do a commerce, baby. Let's go. I would just I would just send money back and forth between friends just because it was free. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Why freedom? That's why. Right. You send me five. I'll send you five. Let's do this. <laughs> exactly. The system works. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'd like to do, and I think this is actually the original conceit of, of what we were. <clears throat> I'm going to be doing here, but I wanted to kind of uh, get how, how into... are we on time? How are we on time? We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't think about, don't think about the clock until I tell you to. Uh, I, I wanted to go through, it's an interesting record and there, there's a lot to it. Uh, what I want to do is kind of go through song by song. You know, you can tell me a little bit about any thoughts behind the songs, uh, lyrics, you know, recording notes, you know, from whence it came, et cetera, et cetera. Things along those lines, anything that's, that comes to mind. And I will do my best not to completely and utterly butcher the language, but I'm probably gonna. So let's, <laughs> so let's start off with the first one. Uh, Subcauda longa susingunt. Is that how you say it? Well, we we prefer to say tuck the long tail under, but yeah, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, do you do we want do we want to do the Latin? You know, fuck the Latin, man. Like, I mean, yeah, it's, we, it's, it's, it's... we had a, a good friend of a good friend of ours, Kaz, uh, helped us with all the actual like when when we weren't doing fake Latin when we were mm-hmm. trying to yeah, do yeah, yeah. Latin. Our good friend Kaz like was nice enough to to give it like just say here's what you should say. I don't I don't even think we tried to pronounce it. We just like. Cut it looks it cool from her yeah. email, it, <laughs> into the booklet. So let's let's so. Just, let's do the ugly American thing. And we'll and we'll do the American time. I was I was gonna do it as a bit, but that, I mean I just felt so like there's sometimes where it's funny and sometimes like I'm just sad for you that you're trying to say those words and you shouldn't because it makes <laughs> it me was, feel bad. It was a good bit, but it it should have ended the way it ended. Like this yeah, is good. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> yeah, no, it was fun. It was good. So tuck the long tail under. Tell me about that one. Is it so henceforth be known? Uh, that's a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> They're all hits, really. That's a big one. It's well, that's the one. That's the song that your mom will like. Uh, it's 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 the pop, like I don't know. Poppy's the right term, but it, it's the one that it, not as abrasive as the other. It's a nice roll into the album. Uh, my recollection of it, the only thing I, I like that sticks out for me is that my parts. I'm the bass player. Hi, Robert. Um, my parts were uh, <laughs> were. Uh, written on a baritone guitar because for like five minutes i'm like hey guys i bought a baritone guitar let's see if i can we can do something and then i'm like nah, there's too many strings but i this i could play this on bass (laughs) (laughs) that's that's what i remember i forgot all about that i forgot all about that no i mean it's it's one of my favorites i mean for me it's a it's a barn burner i'm a huge fan of hooks you know i'm a i'm a pop guy at heart and uh it's got pretty big hooks. Like it's a good, it's a hooky tune. Yeah. Well, it's you know, it's just and it's 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 melodic and um, but then it also has you know the B and C parts like have a bit of bite to them and uh, mm-hmm. you know it, it just came together in a way that I was pretty excited about and and uh, Jerry who printed the booklet who we've talked about before Night of the Symphony Freight Tree Records he um, we were playing a show with his band and he heard us kind of road testing that song and he said. Mm-hmm. He he was the one who was like, that is, that's, that's your song happened. right now. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. your song right now. And so he said, let's do the split. And so we did, we put that in earlier recording, like a, a, a rougher, um, still very good recording actually, um, of that record on a split seven inch with those guys. And, um, and uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was a high point, you know, I think in terms of our songwriting and all of that stuff. And so, when we were getting ready to put this record together, it's like, well, we got to have that. And then Jerry, again, also convinced us that it needs to be the uh, the first track on the record. Um, and well, because it is, it is a out. bold move doing that as the first as the first song, right? Like some some band. Oh, I think we've lost you a little bit. I don't know if this is Zoom or. Okay. I- yeah, exactly. And we're back. Uh, first song is always important, is what I was saying. 
Yeah. And then, uh, you know, it, it, it's a, uh, it's a choice. It's a choice to do that. It's a choice it to, it wasn't that. obvious to us. I mean, you know, I, I always give Tony a bunch of crap for like wanting to have outside like input on this stuff. But in this case, I don't think we would have ended up with this for a whole bunch of reasons. We had probably three or four songs that were going to be the first song until this one. And, uh, and Tony said, let's ask Jerry. And Jerry said, this is the one it's got to be. So. And so Jerry says, and doth it come to pass. Jerry, <laughs> Jerry is a wise, wise gentleman. And yeah. we should all be following him the way I follow him. I dress like him. I, uh, you know, I, I, pr I pray to him nightly. <laughs> yeah, we're not just talking social media, people. It's yeah, no, no, right. Exactly. <laughs> when I say follow, I mean, I'm wearing Nikes right now. I mean, he's got a hell of a tumbler, let me tell you. But... <laughs> uh, no, good, good dude, good dude. So then, uh, so any, I'm sorry, any last thoughts on Tech the, Tail, the Long Tail Under? Um, no, just uh, I'm, I'm proud of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a good, it's a... It's still fun it, to play. It, well, that's good. <laughs> that's a good, that's, that's good, good for me to know too, actually. Uh, like he, he never says that. That's awesome. Oh, no, now it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. That's in the past now. <laughs> John ruined it. John ruined it. So the, talk to me about a uh, slow boil then. The, uh, we got that. Slow boil. Slow boil was like um, almost a, like, you know, I think there was, if you're going to have Tuck be for first song, Slow Boil had to be the next song to like kind of recalibrate the record. Like this is yeah. a little bit about what we're at. Um, it has, you know, there's definitely like a narrative thread through the two songs, I think, that that makes sense to me. Um, but um, Slow Boil is our like, all right, let's 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 peel the doors off. Let's let's just let's do this um, for a while the 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 initial uh, riff reminded me of a Mets song before we changed it. And mm. so we were calling this song Mets for the longest time. And, uh, uh, and then, I mean, but that's often how it happens, right? Like you come in with something, you're like, hey, I like this because it, re I like this because it reminds me of X. And then you spend a lot of time trying to make it no longer sound like X. <laughs> <laughs> make, make sure that isn't true anymore. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, I think that's a really important step, right? I mean, I came across it organically. I was excited about it. Yeah. But, it, you know, like I know there's something there, but I want to kind of strip it of its derivativeness if I can, you know? And, right. and that, I think, was, was the way this song came together. And then lyrically, I think that kind of, the kind of tension of it, like the kind of, like kind of fucked up, like density of it, for me, led to the subject matter, which was all about kind of finding yourself, digging your hole deeper and deeper, aging gracelessly, uh, spending too much time in bars, disappointing the people who love you. Like that's kind of what the song, like kind of became about for me and i think the sonic quality the sonic you know um the song writing arc that we have got me there i like the phrase shy temper i think that's a that's a that's one that stuck out to me i was, I was like oh that's cool that's that's a, that's like that's like a two-word story <laughs> you yeah, know what i mean a little bit yeah a little bit it was it's and that is that's actually as good a point to like build the song out of as any I think you know that that having the the content of the song revolve around that phrase is I'm I'm fine with that. Robert, any uh, thoughts on this one? Uh, I like the middle part. <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> That's the B part for people <laughs> scoring at home. <laughs> it had, it, it's like it like I just remember writing that and it being like sort of like hey we're we're not we're kind of not spazzy here. We're just kind of grooving along. At least that's in my yeah. mind. That's kind of how it felt. And, and then, and if you've seen us live, you've seen, we have an entire, entire choreographed stage routine at that point. In the oh song. yeah. I, that, that, was, that was, I could see it in my <laughs> mind. Since I've seen you guys play so much, I could see it in my mind when, uh, when, when that came through. I was like, Oh yeah, this is where they do the thing. <laughs> it's super elaborate. It's yeah. Super yeah. Elaborate. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So then uh, third song in, we got uh, The Family Meal, which I believe is that that was like a, it was that the first single that was a, yeah, that's the one that, if you're, if you're listening to this live, it's the, it's the one you can listen to now 
if you listen to what, it any other that, time. Conan, is that what counts as a single now? Like the the yeah. preview, the preview, <laughs> the Bandcamp preview song? Is that is that what counts as a single? I have no idea. Anymore. That's a good question. Like, yeah. I don't know. Um, but if that's the case, then yes, yes this is I'm just going to, I'm going to stay with authority that yes, it is it's because I said it earlier and I don't want to You are as myself. much an authority as anybody I could think of right now. So you've, <laughs> you've, I'm, I'm fine with that. This is actually the song that I could probably talk about the longest. So I'll probably, I'll, I'll try and keep it short for me. The content, the this is, this content, is, this is the place to talk about it, man. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, I mean, I think the songwriting happened the way it always happens. Like we, we come, we have a couple of riffs, we string them together, we get the feel for it. We kind of blurt some vocals over it. We see where those vocals are going. We hang on to a phrase and then we build it from there. Like that is our songwriting, like, you know, MO to a T. This song I decided early on with the title, with the first few lines was, um, I realized it was about, um, Chicago chef, Charlie Trotter, um, Mm. who was, I mean, he was probably the second national celebrity chef after Alice Waters. Like he was, you know, he's pre Bourdain. He's like, he was the guy, he was the first person to have like $70 cookbooks that nobody could cook from. He was, you know, and, um, and he was operating in Chicago. He's a really important Chicago figure. And, um, but he also exhibited all of the terrible bad behavior of the like enfant terrible, you know, kind of chef. He was like demanding and he was tough and he would throw pots and pans at least, you know, and everybody that worked in his kitchen went on to be at Alinea and Moto. Like, I mean, like, you know, everybody. Um, But late in his life, after he had to close the restaurant, ran into financial difficulties, um, he became this really weird, like kind of Shakespearean tragic figure for me. And that came, that came home when his last days, he never let go of the building that his restaurant was in. Like he owned it. He never sold it. He never ended it. And I guess in his last like few months, he would be seen entering this building, turning on the lights and basically haunting the place, you know, before he, before he died. Wow. wow. And, and so I just, ca- I could not shake that image. Like I just had no, like, this guy who was so important in so many ways um and and yes he made some mistakes but he was also a genius and everybody that ever studied under him would throw him under the bus every chance they had and for me again it was a shakespearean tragic thing and just the idea of him like going through the kitchen maybe cooking himself a meal you know, like the, the family meal is made for one tonight. Like that is, that's where, that's where that came from. Um, and then, so I told Robert that that's what this song was about and, and said, Hey, we've got this whole section where you can like, you know, do whatever you want with that. Yeah. Piece. yeah. And yeah, he yeah. did this. I, uh, I heard Charlie Trotter. Then I went online, found out who he was. Uh, then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no then uh race to the computer <laughs> I, I i did a little looking into it because i didn't want to be like my my impulse is to do something stupid and i kind of got away with that a little bit on this but but like my i looked up some there's some story about how he was being sued for having sold a fake forty thousand bottle of dollar wine and so my little bit in the middle where i sing is kind of from the perspective of this guy who got a paid forty thousand bucks for some wine and got ripped off by charlie trotter so then he goes to the place to see, uh, to you know, to demand his money back, and then he just sees at night there's some figure lurking in in the rest, kind of what John just described. Is kind of how right, I, right. I wrap yeah. it up. This, but it's the, like, this is the 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 outsider perspective. This is a little, little sidebar. Yeah. yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it worked. Like I mean, I'm just like I think that like and, and you know and I, you know, neither of us had veto power or like suggestive power over what the other person decided to write for their sections, lyrically speaking. Yeah. But, you know, we, we got there. Like, I mean, to me, it totally makes sense to have that story be part of this story. So. It's almost the like interweaving narratives uh, or, uh, you know, Rashomon effect. Of, oh, you know, if you're going to be more of uh, film, film critique. Oh, yes, I do have the criterion channel. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not into French cinema, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more into you know, good American movies like Michael Bay. <laughs> if there's not a lens flare, I'm not there. <laughs> You'll never see me again. I will be out the door. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, Hack is the next song. Well, 
This is oh, this is I've got to remember this. This is uh, the one with our guest guest guitarist, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. yeah. I I know these by the old our, our old titles of them, which. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Robert, this, right? Yeah, that the, yeah, Grumpy from from Sweet Cobra does a little uh, extra guitaring on this. We it start like normally when we were writing the song, it was done with a, a loop pedal, and when we play it live, you'll often see John play with a loop pedal. But uh, we got him to come in and help recording, and that was that actually for me. That's like the best part of the song is just having that extra element in there, and because we did not tell him like except for maybe a little bit of that first initial riff that he plays at the beginning. John didn't say, this is what you play. It's like, here's the song. I, I want you to kind of play here, play here, play here. Just write your parts. And, and he came up with some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. No, he's got full on like co-songwriting, like, you know, credit for that. I mean, just the way he took what I do on the robot, I'm sorry, on the, on the loop pedal and like, and, you know, kind of uh, built on it and changed it and made it better. Like, um, I mean, every chance we get, we will we'll play, you know, with him. Uh, yeah. to, to play that song um a great player yeah i mean it's <sighs> yeah no he's the best he's just like intuitive he's super intuitive um and just one of the best dudes ever have you met grumpy before he's just yeah. like he's the sweetest dude um the song itself is actually pretty dark um it's uh it's about a mutual friend of ours who was doing gig work he was driving for one of the share ride things uber mm -hmm. I think, and um, had one of those nights that just went, everything that could go wrong went wrong. And I'm not talking about like Mr. Turn or, you know, yeah. got stiffed on the fair, but um, you know, just there was violence involved in the whole thing. And he still suffers a little bit of um, PTSD from it. And so um, this song was inspired by his, uh, by his, experience and his um you know uh the way he the way i think he feels he might feel about that stuff now um and uh yeah and and you know and therefore like kind of a i don't know a cautionary tale about the gig work economy i don't know i don't want to make it too big but you know there we have it well yeah i mean it doesn't have to necessarily be bob dylan's hurricane or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh no, this is better than that. Come on, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's certainly shorter than that. That's a very long song. <laughs> uh, but no, I don't so know if that should be your metric, though. You know, it's it's a it's a pretty long I, one. It's a, this is a this is an important song for me because I think of I think of our mutual friend every time every time we sing it. You know, every time we play it, and uh, and uh, it's just um you know it's an important song to me. Salt is the next one, which is the the end of uh, side A or side one, I guess technically. This Robert, is, this is babies. Just in case. Yes, you're... yes. Yeah, this babies. is this is probably the oldest song on the record. Uh, I think it was one of the first ones we wrote after uh, Last Hydronaut, and for that reason, I think it's like of the songs on the record. I think it's like the one that we least go back to, and when we when we do shows and stuff. But I like I really like the bass part that I play. I mean, I'm more. I didn't write. I like the tech. I mean, into my parts basically is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, to be, clear, Robert, to be clear, we all are. We all this, are. It, I do some cr to pretty, be uh, pretty goofy <laughs> things in there that I, I don't really do. Like I'm playing chords at one point and just, and it, it's a fun song for me to play. We don't often play it these days, but it, it's, uh, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I just right, check we'll out that band, Monogon. All right, I hear you. Okay, we're working band shit out in real time here on the radio. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, <laughs> no, uh, for me, I, this is one of those songs where I, you know, when we first wrote it, I like called it like something like Cute Babies or whatever, because it sounded so poppy to me at, <laughs> at first. And then right, I right. went back and realized that I think we changed time signature like 15 times in this song. <laughs> Like, I mean, that's, it, that, that's like you're getting paid by the time signature change. Yeah, I know, point. right? Exactly. <laughs> and I think, I think, to be perfectly honest, I think I kind of shut that one down a little bit once I realized that because I was a little embarrassed. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, if, if people are going to think that we're trying to be, you know, Rush or whatever. Um, but uh, but it, I promise you, we came by it honestly. You know, it's just like it was all the flow, it all made sense to us at the time. It was only in retrospect that we realized. How kind of how fucked up it was. 
longtime listeners of the show will be sick of me talking about this, but uh, there there was a a friend show I went to once that a prog band played, and afterwards, uh, one of the the fella who of course had very proggy frizzy hair, and he was sitting down on a stool too, and he's just like, um, you may not be aware that all the songs we were playing are not in traditional four four time. That one was, and I was like, oh my god, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, really? And I was, and it was like, and and to be clear, there were the other bands, me and like four other people here. I was like, dude nobody here cares about that at all yeah. uh but <clears throat> you're leaving out the coolest part of the story what was the time signature <laughs> <laughs> it was and that's that's the funny thing about the story is like i think every time i tell the story it's a different time signature but it really doesn't matter because it, it, it really what, what amounts is the importance of like him explaining what the time signatures were <laughs> So can I just a quick digression from that? And this is a really yeah. important piece of <laughs> From a completely unrelated story? Yeah, go so, ahead. Yeah, if I could digress from your digression. If we yeah, could start. Dig- digress squared. How dare you? First of all, how dare you? But okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. You know you know Rose and you know Rick. I do. Right? I mean, yeah. just like two of the, you know, the poster, poster children, like just two forces of independent rock in the Midwest. And... Um, and, you know, Robert and I were lucky enough to be in Champaign when they were playing their first shows and, you know, you know, share the stage with them occasionally and the whole thing. And, um, and uh, I can't remember, if, I think it was Rose, who when it came to time signatures said something along the lines of the key to making interesting rock and roll is if you're playing a time signature that isn't 4-4, make it sound like it is. If you're playing a song that isn't in four four, make it sound like it's not. Oh, and I, that's I, nice. I, yeah, I that's good. I internalize that so hard. Like, I mean, I think I think that is a unifying like piece of my songwriting, like to this day. Right, right. Rose, yeah, if you're you... listening, disabuse me of that. You know, sorry if I misquoted you. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh. Yeah, that, that's another reason why maybe you don't want to announce them after each song like that band did. That again, that was years ago too. Uh, but I think that that's that's an interesting point because you know, for the listener, they're not going to be sitting there, you know, with a, a sextant and a sextant. Wait, no, uh, abacus <laughs> is what I was thinking of. <laughs> I, I was thinking maybe it would be a coal fired <laughs> metronome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's good. It's a callback. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think that I think that's important. Did, so, is, was this always like? Did you know where this was going to be like side A under originally, or does it they just kind of end up being that way? We went through several song orders, and I don't know if this one was like. I think at one point of June was going to end this side. We we moved them around a bit, and so and it was only at the last minute when uh, we kind of had outside. People listen, you know, so, you know, Jerry suggested that we start with talk and then it all started to fall into place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then, so let's talk about side B or side two, you yeah, know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, so to speak. Uh, June of 14. <laughs> uh, is this, the, is this the one with the cool sound effect in the middle? Which one do we no, do that? No, I think that was actually family meal. Oh. So we, yeah, we missed the boat on that. Uh, uh. Um, you can still talk about it. You're not no, 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 barred no, no. from talking no, about it's, earlier it's, songs. It's, 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 a, it's an Easter egg. Don't worry about it. We didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a post-credit scene. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, Judah 14, um, it's a song we've been playing for a long time. And uh, it, you know, I mean, obviously the title is, uh, is a reference to the amazing band Judah 44. Yep. It's one of those working titles that just stuck, you know, like it, it it's uh, I think there was, at some point there was a, a, you know, something about my guitar part that might have reminded me of June of 44. Sure. Yeah, again, yeah. we wanted to strip the strip that kind of direct influence of it. We fixed it, you know, whatever. But it stuck just because it seemed so poignant to me, at least. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a slower like kind of bit of a build for us um you know it's it it does the quiet loud you know quiet thing uh in a way that we that this band has never really done before and um so for me it's one of my favorite ones to play live um 
it just it's it's a bit of a breather in the middle of the set but it's also like you know it's a physical breather but it's also a literal like a like a metaphorical breather it's like a like okay let's there's there's something to hang on to here let's all just kind of calm down let's you know it, it, it's a for me this song is a little of a balm <laughs> like a lip balm lip balm yeah. Yeah. right 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 robert uh, uh it's it's pretty cool um <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i it's uh it's got some uh uh, it, it's kind of tough for me to play some at times, but uh, yeah, I like I like it. I don't know, Tony. What do you think, <laughs> Tony? Where's Tony? <laughs> just just coming in right now? Tony, is saving our asses. Tony, Tony, no Tony. Okay, no, I you know the song for me is about um, and, you know, and I kind of took that kind of the sparseness of it and kind of the the way it makes me feel emotionally and uh, realized that. Um, you know, it's it. The song makes me feel a little bit lost when it, it brings up those feelings of, of being lost when I play it. And so, um, right. you know, it's uh, and then on top of that, kind of not being able to fix that, like not being able to like figure out how to get out of that rut. Um, yeah. You know, like there's one line in there that's um, it's all been done over, but nothing's been done right with nothing done yeah. right. And that just feels like it's a Sisyphusian kind of like existential thing that I live with every single fucking minute. <laughs> well, I, I like the, uh, you know, it's so similar to place earlier, but the toe the line and discovered I'm on the wrong side. It was sort of like, it was like, oh, yeah, that's. Yeah, <sighs> no, that's mm. it. Yeah, that's it. Like, it's, it's just, you, you, you think you got it together and then you look around and you realize the line is like, four feet behind you. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that's exactly it. That's exactly not it. ideal. Yeah. So then we have a so the, the next song is Jeff's. So can you tell me, Mr. Mr. Book Word Guy that you are, what when you have that implied uh pluralization, that uh parentheses S and is there a word for that? I have no idea. Oh. I, wish, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. Um, but the title is actually pretty, like you know, a pretty funny thing about this about this song. Please you know tell me more. It? Well, we this we were playing the song, like we were working out the bones of the song, and uh, I think we got got it going. And then at some point, I'm like, oh this would be really cool if we got like Jeff from Knife the symphony to sing at this part, you know, kind of how he sings. And I shouldn't have said that. Cause then it's like, well, Robert, since, since you've got this sound in your head of what it should sound like, why don't you sing this one? And it's like, all oh, right. Okay. So uh, it, it's basically, uh, and then we, we, that was like our placeholder name for a while. Cause like, Oh yeah, it's, this, it's the one I try and sound like Jeff from. And, uh, and it just, we never changed the title. <laughs> yeah. that's how it, that's how it worked, ended up yeah and, and like it, it became this thing i think when when robert said oh yeah i think i might like to like it'd be great if jeff sang on this i'm like well you should jeff all over this that's what you should do <laughs> <laughs> Jeff all over this you're jeffing all over me <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> um, this nice. song's really fun. I mean, this is this is a song that Robert came in with both the bass guitar and the uh, guitar guitar, the other guitar. Like kind hence, of all hence the capo, which is why <laughs> figured out. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is this is the song with our big key change, which is which means we move we put actually put a capo on. But um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, Robert came in with this thing like at least half formed and uh and it was exciting i would love for that to happen more often what do you got what do you got uh, okay, <laughs> hint <my>. hint hint <laughs> how much time do we have let me write something <laughs> <laughs> i've got a baby name book i we can go through and make all sorts of names with s's at the end wait a minute why do you have a baby name book uh i collect just, babies just asking <laughs> <laughs> Duh! Hello. <laughs> uh, I, I was gonna say in, in the book too. This is the one that's got the uh, the salamander with the sort of uh, rocketeer style 
uh, outfit him. He's, yeah. That's one of my favorite animals. There's a the salamander. All right. You're welcome. It's, you, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite, Robert? Do you have a favorite? Uh, I like the grouper just because I got the colors yeah. right, I think. Uh, that's the one I use on the cover of the booklet, and that's kind of why I picked that one. For it's me, not, it's, it's, by far, it's the frog. The frog oh, is okay. the best. Yeah. The frog's pretty rad. Yeah. yeah. I, I do like the idea of a shrimp with hey, that's hang gliding, but I, you know, it's not the most interesting <laughs> image on the, on the cover but i do like the concept of a hang gliding shrimp as the setup and or punchline of a joke it's fantastic but as a visual <laughs> image, it maybe leave something to be desired and the shrimp was hang gliding ah! <laughs> ah, it's so good you hear that the shrimp was hang gliding <laughs> boxes next boxes yes oh. i know this one <laughs> Let me let me take this one. It's not a gun, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thanks for your participation, Robert. <laughs> this, is, this was like a this was just a quick thing that worked, you know, like you know, brought it into practice, like we clicked in immediately. Uh uh, you know, the lyrics that are on it are something I'm I'm not even entirely sure I stand by at this point. This is how long we've been playing some of these songs. But you know, it's kind of about the way that discourse has changed and how I kind of miss it having, uh, I miss the concept at least of like, you know, mm. rowdy people shouting things out in a dance hall or a union hall or a, or a town square. Um, right. You know, that, the fact that I think that, um, you know, the, the, the veil of the internet makes it too easy for people to like kind of throw bombs and run away. Um, but, um, and I'm, you know, I'm not. That's a, that's a that's a that's a old man wearing onions on his belt kind of concept at this point. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's it, it it felt right when we were kind of putting the song together. Um, but I I don't know. I really I really love this song. It's so much fun to play. It's so much fun to play. Did that uh, strike any chords for you there, Robert? Um. Yeah. It's it's kind of it's somewhat basic in terms of just like it's it seems very like it's not as frantic or crazy as some of our other ones but it that's i think what makes it fun to play is it's just it's kind of straightforward and and uh well it's not that straightforward but it's a nonagon song so yeah but uh <laughs> I, I think yeah. the reason the reason we settled on boxes which was also another one where the working title stuck is because the the riff that I'm playing on the guitar is basically a box, right? You know, you know. Ah, you know it's like I a mean. box pattern. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But then there's part of the song that becomes about the soapbox that people like, kind of, you know, get on to orate or whatever. And so those two things kind of came together, and we're like, okay, fine. This is a song we don't have to think of a different title for. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. Move on. Well, it's also, you know, it's it's, it's it, you, you can come up with all kinds of fantastical stories of what it means. It's one of those ones that, uh, you know, uh, you can imbue meaning into it if you feel so inclined. Come up with some total nonsense story and, uh, you know. Is that what you did? <laughs> what do you think it was about? I, I had no idea. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair enough. Believe me, if I had any idea, I'd just be like, here's what your songs are about. It's this, 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 and no. Well, I mean, to be perfectly <laughs> honest, I mean, I mean like, we, I like, I those songs are always my favorite. Those songs, I mean, that's why I was kind of wandering into this interview with a little bit of trepidation because the way that I prefer to write lyrics is also the way that I prefer to hear lyrics. Whereas I right. think I have like the, the thread, but I'd rather like kind of imbue my own, like, you know, approach to it, you know? And I, and I, I, I hope, I think, despite me telling everybody right now what every song is about, that, that they can bring their own thing to it. You know, there are some phrases in there that I, that I think might be ambiguous enough that I'm hoping other folks will, will find their way inside of it. I mean, it's a jumping off point, right? And, and, and the idea is that just by, by sharing the experiences and giving context to where it came from doesn't immediately say definitionally that's the only thing that it has to be. Right. And I, I think that that's, I, th I think that w the artist needs to give the listener some credit for being able to think for themselves and also a reality check that, you know, it's the people that are going to look for this type of deep dive are the people who can look for this kind of deep dive and they're going to take that into their 
uh, field of, of knowledge and they're going to you know do with that what they will. But it's not like everyone's like going to be sitting there like, oh, I can only think of it this way now or something along those lines. And people are going right. to hear whatever they're going to hear. Right. Thank you. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> swing, swing Goat is next. Oh, yeah. This one... This one got retooled a little bit to be part of that. Uh, what is it called? The uh, the pre- pre- unprecedented pre- unprecedented compilation that. Uh, oh right, yeah, of course. Yeah, this is where this song first showed up. Uh, a different version of this song first showed up on that compilation. Yeah, I didn't know how to play the bass during that one. That when we recorded the first time. Really, I'm, I haven't. Listened I, to I, I think I I think I had just kind of got written my parts around that time, and so they're very sloppy. Sorry, sorry about that unprecedented purchasers <laughs> <laughs> so the conceit of you that single-handedly <laughs> kept trump in office for the entire time because of your mediocre bass playing oh my god i knew it had to be my fault somehow i knew it only was. you had written your bar ahead of time yeah. oh, maybe it was intentional <laughs> oh. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> So yeah, so obviously anyway, so. The, the conceit of that comp was people contributing to their displeasure for the current administration at the time. Yeah. Uh, and so I think we took a little bit of a different approach to it. It wasn't just like one, two, three, four, fuck Trump. Um, not that there were, I mean, everybody approached it in really smart ways. Yeah, everybody approached it a little bit sideways actually. Mm-hmm. But I, I think, you know, for me, it was important to kind of own up to the fact that the whole thing happened on our watch, that the whole thing happened while we were all like kind of asleep at the wheel. And so yeah. that's kind of what the song's about for me. And none of it came from nowhere either. And that's something that I think it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can scream for accountability all you want, but uh, you can't make people take stock of their own situation sometimes. Uh, I mean, I think it was just a, like so many people who are my enemies right now weren't for a while but they were ignored by me and when you know by people like me for a really long time and they you know and and they went to one side and i went to the other side and that's where it was and you know i i just you know i i i I don't think that's the whole story Uh, obviously it's not the whole story but i think it's an important part of the story the holdouts is next Ah. it's a funky one yeah i i like i get all flea on this one not really <laughs> the, the, an, the animal not the bass player um, it, it's really just the sock wearing you know. <laughs> uh yeah this this one uh has kind of grown on us i think it may have maybe the the last of of the, the songs on the album that we on the album that we actually have written wrote maybe the last one that came yeah i think it was, came I think together. It was the freshest yeah yeah and uh and it's kind of grown on us and we've, and uh, yeah, and it's not, I don't have much to say about what it's about. It's, you know, it's about that thing that John's about to tell you. <laughs> I do want to say though, the it's about all those music, things that he's about to tell you. It's going to be fantastic. The approach of the music was a little bit different on this. I think like, I, I feel like, I feel like we were getting a little bit of our like little kind of funk groove on. Like I, you know, it was not, um, yeah. it was the kind of thing that like, when we started playing it and it started coming together, it was the kind of thing that like cooler me of like 25 years ago would have said, we can't do this. It sounds too much. Like, you know, it sounds, it sounds funky or it's not, you know, whatever. And, um, but you know, like it, gang of four is funky. You know what I, I know, mean? Well, like there's, there's different ways it, to right. funk. Yeah. Look, I'm not, <laughs> look, I, I, will agree with you on the ignorance of youth all over yeah, the place, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, that's, it was, it's, it's one of those things. Let, and, let uh, us agree that the youth are ignorant. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it just started to make sense as it gelled, you know, as the parts came together uh, and we enjoyed like swinging our hips a little bit while we were playing it. And, um, uh, and, but, you know, then of course I had to like make it be about the, you know, the evils of, you know, uh, developers and property owners and you know, the whole thing. I had to Fugazi all over it, you know, uh, you know, which is just so no I slam do. dancing during this one. It's Fugazi. <laughs> <laughs> You've been Fugazi, son. I just I can't help myself. I can't help myself. 
Oh, then, this, one has, uh, this one has a blood curdling scream in the middle. If you listen closely, oh. <laughs> it does. Your blood will curdle. <laughs> Gang vocals. We love them. <laughs> we, we, should, we forgot to put that on the front of the, God damn it. The warning sticker. We never got the warning stickers made. Your blood will curdle. God damn oh, it. Oh, man. Well, again, save it for the second edition. Right, exactly. <laughs> Where, by the way, we will start making money. So please point your browser <laughs> to bandcamp.com. Uh, so then that uh, rounds out the album with bells. Uh, this is our, one of our, good, our, our best fans, Annie. She loves this song. Uh, she thinks it's so boring. She thinks it's so boring. <laughs> she comes by it honestly though i mean it's like you know this is this was an experiment in minimalism for us which is something that we don't normally do i mean it's based around one repeating chord like you know uh the changes were minor we instead of messing with the chords we mess with the time signature at one point um so it was a bit of experiment that I think kind of worked just because it's so weird. We've got this giant discordant chord that just gets repeated and repeated and repeated. And I think the more you listen to it, the more you realize kind of how wrong and how right it is. At least that's that's where I go with it. I'm, I'm pretty excited sonically with the way that song kind of came together. And, and going back to our talk about uh, track order, from the get go, this was always going to be the end. The end. The album was always going to end with this song. That was like he knew it was going. That was yeah, going to be the yeah. end there. Yeah. So, it's a, you know it's big and it's dramatic and you know it has a has a decay at the end that we're excited about. You know it's like a it was yeah this was always the this was always the closer. Well, I think it's a hell of a record, boys. I think uh, oh, it's. Thank you. I think everyone should uh, check it out. And of course, if you're going to nonagonchicago.bandcamp.com. As uh, is the place to go. You can also, you can probably, they can probably go to the Control Burn website, right? He said without looking at all. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would assume so. Yeah. And if you but, go there, those pirates at Bandcamp won't get their cut. Yeah, exactly. Those, those bastards. <laughs> yeah, they in it for the money, clearly. Uh, uh, this has been great, guys. Um, have we. I, I, I'd say we should have done a long time ago, but you've got a kick-ass record and it, it was real cool to go over it in this engrossing detail with you guys. Uh, last thing, something I always ask folks on the show is uh, it's, a, it's only can question. We'll start right with you, Robert, then we'll go to you, John, and just, uh, why do you do what you do? What do I do with what I do? Just uh, the, the answer is just because it feels good and it's wow. fun. Wow, hedonist. I always knew it. I always knew you were a hedonist. <laughs> I do it for the Lord Satan, of course. <laughs> <laughs> do as thou wilt. <laughs> I want you to elaborate a little bit, Robert, because I'm not, I'm not quite sure why you do what we do. Uh, Sometimes. I, 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 well, I, uh, I enjoy playing the music. You heard it, it everybody. <laughs> you heard it. He enjoys it. I, 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 he I enjoys realized, it. I, after us, uh, it's on the record. Let the record nine, nine months of not practicing and doing anything, you know, getting back together these last few months, we've had a few practices. You know, this might this might be something I like. I think uh, I'm coming around to it after seventeen years. I can't years. tell you. I can't <laughs> tell you. Music this thing. moment is making me tear up. Like I'm literally <laughs> tearing up right now. <laughs> Beautiful, John. Uh, same question to you. Again, interpret however you like. Why I do, do it because it do? makes Robert happy. <laughs> No, no, no. I, do, I do it. It's super complicated. I do it because it's, uh, I do it because it's a thing that I've always wanted to do despite not being very good at it. Like I, I've always like, I, I, I listen to the bands that I love and I, and I go see the shows that move me and I've always wanted to do that and um, despite the fact that I'm not really great at it in a lot of ways, uh, it's the chase of that for me is exciting. And that's why I do it. That, that's, 
That's the perfect John Hasty answer. Let me just say that uh, you are fantastic at it, and I'm not going to let you say it. I'll cut you off if you try. Uh, and appreciate you. Appreciate you guys coming on the show. They Birds by Nonagon. Nonagonchicago.bandcamp.com. Uh, you're at least on Facebook. I know that. You're on just some other social media stuff, right? So uh, go go look at that. Click on it. Do the, whatever the thing is you do. <laughs> and, uh, fellas, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks Conan, for thank us. you. This was great. Thank you. It's fantastic. Thanks. There they go. Robert and John of Nonagon. Let's listen to a Nonagon song. Monagon, the family meal. That is off of the record. They birds available now. Control burn records. Go and get it. Make it happen. Live the dream. Get into Nonagon, the Nonagon boys. Nonagon Chicago. Bandcamp.com. Thank you for listening to Protonic Reversal. If you're listening live, we got the operative coming up uh, with. Heather Smith of Bone and Bell. And that's going to be coming up momentarily. Everyone else, ProtonicReversal.com for the archives. Uh, let's see, what else? Patreon.com slash ProtonicReversal. All that good stuff. Thank you so much. You're listening to Radio Nope. And uh, yeah, go buy yourself an Onagon record. 
as they say, the parlance of our times. Treat yourself. To some Donagon. That's right. For Donacommercial.com. On all the things, etc., etc., ad infinitum. Cool. Thanks for listening, folks. All right. Now I'm gone with the family meal off of. They Birds. Available now, Control Burn Records. Nonagonchicago.bandcamp.com. Control Burn. Great times, great oldies. <laughs> I'd like to thank John Hasty and Robert Gomez for uh, coming on the show. No thanks to Tony. <laughs> No, no, we, 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 we love Tony. He's, he's awesome. Next time. That'll be for next record. You know, 2030 when that happens. Hey, listen. The name of the show is Conan Transport Talk Reversal. This show happens, generally speaking, Thursdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. Also at other times and dates. Always on RadioNope.com. Radio Nope. Say yes to Nope. Archives. Protonicreversal.com. If you like the show, want to hear episodes sooner? $1 a month will get you there. Patreon.com slash Protonicreversal. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding. Mr. and Mrs. America, all the ships at sea. Uh, big shout out to... Big shout out. Anyone within the sound of my voice. Thank you very much, uh, everybody who has shared the show around, uh, you know, talked about it to their friends, I've got so on and so on. Fifty thousand watts of power. likes and shares and reviews and whatnot may seem absurd, but it helps people discover the show. I it's always appreciated. Here. Thank you for doing that, and thank you for listening. Who's coming up? Uh, oh, Rick Frober. Rick Froberg coming up next. Microphone turns sound into electricity. Greg Sonier of uh, Deerhoof again, and uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. Just stay tuned. Out on Route 128. Take it easy. And stay safe. Take Got it easy. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now?
Thank you. 